Secure the cable to a vise. Begin to cut the outer jacket two inches from the end. You must be careful not to damage the wires inside the insulation. Make an incision down the center of the sheath. If the inner wires are damaged, you must sever the cable and start again. Use a pair of pliers to remove the outer insulation. Clip off the yellow fibers as close to the outer jacket as possible. Peel off the plastic that encases the wires. Snip around the edges of the sheath to make it easier to screw on the sawn cup. Remove the orange cable. Check the end of each black wire to determine which is the black coax cable and which is the black ground cable. A good way to do this is to snip the end of the cable to see if there is a wire within the sheath. Once these two wires have been located, cut off the remaining black wires. Remove the fiberglass rod by cutting it at the base. Strip the insulation off both black wires. Extract the white wire out of the coax cable's metal sheath. Take the metal sheath and wrap it around the base of the black ground cable. Solder the wires together at the area where they meet. Be careful to keep the other wires out of the way. The white wire is especially sensitive to heat. Slide a piece of insulation over both the coax cable and the ground cable. Apply the heat gun. You may want to perform a continuity test on both wires to ensure there are no shorts. Take a larger piece of insulation and slide it over both wires. It must cover the exposed area at the base of the wires. Apply the heat gun. Begin to screw on the sawn cup. Be sure it is straight. Add a little epoxy to the back of the cup. Continue to screw on the sawn cup so that 3 quarters of an inch of cable is inside the cup. Note that the two holes in the sawn cup are facing up. Strip half an inch of insulation from each sawned wire. Push the sand into the back of the cup. Cut the yellow and green wires half an inch away from the cup. Strip both wires. Twist the green wire and yellow sand wire together. Then add solder. Twist the yellow wire and the blue sand wire together. Once again, solder the wires. Place insulation over both exposed areas. Apply the heat gun. Push the sand wires into the cup. Super glue the metal ring to the end of the sand cup. Next, you will need to attach the plug to the remaining wires. Trim each wire back, then slide heat shrink over each one before soldering. Look on the inside of the plug to locate the number for each pin. Solder the red wire to pin number one. Pull the sheath over the exposed area and apply the heat gun. Continue with soldering the blue wire which goes to pin number 4. Solder the black ground cable to pin number 2. Finally, the coax wire goes to pin number 3. You will need to hold the 4-pin connector in place using this tool. Doing so will allow you to tighten the metal housing onto the sand cup 
without twisting the wires inside. Place some epoxy on the threads to ensure the metal housing holds securely. Plug up one of the holes at the top of the sawn cup. Insert the tip of the epoxy gun into the second hole. Slowly inject the glue into the hole. Performing this process at a slow rate will prevent air pockets from forming. Be sure that you do not overfill the cup or else glue may begin to leak out of the pins. Use a Q-tip to remove any epoxy that may have leaked inside. Wipe off any remaining epoxy. Check the two holes to be sure that they are both filled. Apply more glue as needed. Use electrical tape to cover the holes. Raise the cable vertically for 24 hours. This will allow time for the glue to set. 